Well, good morning to Word of Life Church. I'm glad you can join me. And um, if I seem a little disoriented, this is the third time I've attempted to record this message. So, um, you know, uh, maybe the devil doesn't want this going out or something. Uh, but hopefully the third time is the charm, okay? So um, uh, we're glad you're with us today. Um, we'll be online, of course, this week and next week. And then on the 23rd, we will be having a, a service outside together again. We we'll look forward to seeing all of you on that day. Um, we're grateful that you have been faithful uh, in your giving, as well as uh, staying connected with each other. I know several small groups are meeting and we're grateful that uh, you're doing that. If you feel comfortable with that, we would encourage you to do so, uh, to begin staying connected and doing all that you can. Uh, uh, we just ask you to remember uh, our former church secretary, Norma uh, Gadbury Hastings. Uh, some of you might remember Norma. She is in the hospital undergoing a heart procedure. Uh, and our prayers go to, go out to Norma, uh, and uh, so um, we're uh, just ask you to remember her in your prayers, uh, as well as Temple, who Pittager, who uh, is scheduled to undergo surgery here uh, in about a week, and so we want you to remember uh, her in prayer also. Um, we want to uh, make some comments about the go. Uh, which is a global outreach. We do our, do our global outreach offering emphasis from August till December. Um, and our goal is to reach over $16,000. Uh, hopefully seventeen is what we did last year. And we're hoping to reach that again. Uh, and so we want you to be reminded to give a day's wage. I, as your pastor, so believe in this offering that I give triple my day's wage uh, most of the time. And uh, so uh, we're just grateful for everyone that can give uh, in behalf of this offering. Uh, right now they're having massive flooding in Bangladesh, northern India, um, uh, parts of Nepal, uh, and uh, even down into uh, Thailand and uh, other places. And millions of people are being affected. It's in times like these that the Global Outreach Offering comes in handy, handy uh, to reach and minister to people. And uh, so we would encourage you to give a day's wage, at least a day's wage uh, for uh, the GO Offering. So God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do. I want to talk to you this morning about uh, really... My title of my message is from an old hymn song that came to me about a week ago. And uh, I was looking around at all the bad news and just all the stuff that is going on in the world. And I thought, man, you know, uh, you don't hear any uplifting news anymore. And all you hear is spin. All you hear is lies. All you see is deception and all of this and um, this uh, in the course of those thinking and and really uh, seeking God this came to me about this song and uh, so I started doing a little bit of research and my thoughts were already moving that direction anyway and uh, so I want to use as a verse a verse from Psalms 98 uh, one verse verse number one and it says to you and I, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. You know, in every generation, new songs are birthed. That's happening now. Uh, it's happened for forever. Uh, and it happened again. Uh, the song I'm thinking about today is an old song, but it was a new song one day to a man who wrote it. 
and it became a new song of the church for a while. And uh, this man that wrote this song was uh, Eugene Bartlett. And Eugene Bartlett is considered one of the founders of gospel music. He's considered uh, one of the founders of southern gospel music, for in fact, he started a lot of singing schools for anyone who was interested in learning how to sing. And most of us are aware of the old hymn books that uh, many churches had. Some of those hymn books have shape notes in it where uh, you can learn uh, uh, how to sing along with the songs and so forth. And Bartlett was one of those music teachers. Matter of fact, he was a great music teacher, and he taught many people in his singing schools. One of the guys he taught was a uh, man by the name of Albert Brumley, who wrote perhaps one of the, at one time, for many years, it was the most sung song in gospel music, entitled I'll Fly Away. Albert Brumley got his start in uh, Eugene Bartlett's School of uh, Music. He, uh, Bartlett was married in 1917, had a couple of children. Uh, his, both of his boys followed in his footsteps and were music teachers. In 1918, Bartlett founded the Hart, Hartford Music Company, which published the first church hymnal. He sold 15,000 copies his first year, which enabled him uh, to have a, a great business to support his family and support his singing school. Bartlett wrote more than 800 songs in his career. That's a lot of songs. Some songwriters have written a lot more, but he wrote more than 800. Most all of those songs are forgotten, all except one. One is remembered. One is an old hymn song entitled Victory in Jesus. This song, Victory in Jesus, was born uh, in a time in which you would have least thought that Eugene Bartlett could have wrote a song. Bartlett suffered a stroke in 1939, uh, which left him almost bedridden and... Uh, for about a year and a half until his death in 1941, um, Bartlett read his Bible, studied his Bible, and he would jot down phrases. One of the songs that he wrote down during this time was this song, Victory in Jesus. Be reminded that many songs that uh, have an anointing and stick with generation after generation are written in times of the songwriter's bleakest, darkest times. This was a bleak, dark time for uh, Bartlett, and yet he wrote this great song, Victory in Jesus. I, I think as I remember uh, those words, and don't you remember those words? I remember them, and it's uh, that first stanza goes, I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning and his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Uh, I can tell you that's a great song. And when you really look over the words of that song, you really marvel at the revelation that God gave Eugene Bartlett and what he was feeling as he wrote this song, Victory in Jesus. Have you ever considered why it became a church favorite? Uh, it, was it just because it was anointed? Well, consider the times that this song came out of. Consider uh, what had happened. There was... Uh, 
awful World War I in which uh, it was going on when Bartlett was about to get married, uh, in which um, 116,500 soldiers, U.S. soldiers, died and 320,000 were wounded or maimed uh, in that fight. And then you had the great Spanish influenza, that great pandemic that killed 675,000 Americans uh, and killed 50 million people worldwide. And uh, that all happened in those years that Brumley got married and started his singing schools and his music ministry. And then there was the awful Great Depression that hit not only the United States, but it hit the world and uh, caused many people to commit suicide. And you know what? There's even stories of that today, of people committing suicides because of this pandemic and the way they feel because of the effects of being isolated. They felt that way during the Great Depression because they had lost material and, and things, and they never thought that they could recover, and they took their lives. And then came the entry into World War II, in which over 418,000 U.S. soldiers died, and 85 million people perished uh, in World War II across the world. And so there had been so much tragedy during Eugene Bartlett's life that uh, I think as he's lying there in those in that bed for the last year and a half or so of his life, and as as he's reading his Bible and as he's praying, and God gives him the words to this song about victory in Jesus. He recognizes that he had come through struggle after struggle after struggle. Sometimes the hurt was so overwhelming. And you know, people are feeling that way today. They're feeling the struggle. They're feeling the pain. They're feeling the effect. You know, if you think you've got it bad, a family in my conference, one of my pastors, uh, has had nothing but about two and a half years of sorrow and of trouble that have come his way. Uh, uh, first, his son-in-law was killed in a auto accident, and then the wife later died, and then there was... Uh, uh, his own wife died, and then just recently, his youngest daughter uh, died very suddenly. And so in this family, they've had lots of sorrow, but he's still looking to Christ. He's still looking to God, knowing that one day uh, that ultimate victory will be his. And once in a while, we all need to be reminded that there's victory in Jesus Christ. The world has launched a battle against the people of God. Let me define what the world means uh, in biblical sense, because many people, when you say the world, they think that it means the physical world, the planet. Uh, that is not what we're talking about. Others think it means the massive humanity that Jesus Christ came to save. That is not what we're talking about. The world that has launched a battle against the people of God is a system that is opposed to God. It is a system that is, that is against a way of life uh, that uh, lives according to God's principles. That system fights against the will and the purposes of God. The world tries to make God's people lose their influence. The world tries to get God's people to compromise so that they, God's people, will lose their identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you lose your identity, you will lose your victory. I can tell you that 
in a battle, in any battle, it's easy to feel like you're wanting to give up. And if we're not careful, we'll become the victim instead of the victor. But God has not called us to be the victim, but he has called us to be the victor. As Christians, we have to be reminded again and again of our victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning beginning and the end. Jesus Christ is he who was and was dead and now is behold is alive forevermore. Jesus Christ is the captain of the Lord's host, is the supreme victor. Philippians chapter 2 in verse 9 says to us, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him who Jesus and given him him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. Gilbert uh, uh, G. Patterson, who I consider to be one of the greatest uh, preachers of our day. He's an African-American brother who's now since just gone on to his reward uh, to be with the Lord a few years ago. He said once, he said, when the name of Jesus is spoken in heaven or anywhere else kneeling, takes place. He said, when it's spoken in heaven, the angels kneel and cover their faces. When it's spoken on earth, men kneel and rejoice in their heart because he is the victor. When it's spoken in hell, I can tell you demons tremble as they kneel before it. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess Confess that he is Lord. All the proud of the earth, all of the kings, all of the rulers, all of the politicians, all of the imams, and all of the religious leaders one day will confess with their knee bowed before the Lord Jesus, and they will confess that indeed he is the Lord, the supreme victor. Jesus Christ has secured our victory. Paul understood that when he said, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? And then Isaiah began to pin the words that we know so well that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment shall be condemned or thou wilt condemn them. I'm here to tell you that we're living on the right side of history. We're living on the victorious side of history. We're living on the victorious side, which is God's side. We are not living according to the world. Hear me today. The Red Sea could not stop Moses. A fiery furnace could not stop the three Hebrew children. A lion's den could not stop Daniel. A barren womb could not stop Sarah. The walls of Jericho could not stop Joshua. The prison walls could not stop Paul and Silas. The tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ could not stop him from raising from the dead. The stone that was rolled in place had to be removed because that stone could not stop him. Why? Because he is the victor. He is the captain of the Lord's host. And because of his victory, our victory is secured. When the Holy Spirit moved upon Eugene Bartlett to write this song, he wrote these three verses 
that spoke of our victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first verse of that beloved hymnal, he deals with our salvation. He says, he starts out by saying, I heard an old, old story. An old, old story. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world? It's an old, old story. And friend, it's not going away because the story is continuing today from a lamb slain from the foundation of the world to the lamb slain on Calvary to the Lord Jesus Christ that has arisen and ascended back to the Father and will come again and receive us unto himself that where he is that we may be also. I'm here to tell you we're living on the right side of victory. We're living on the right side of what God has. It's an old, old story about a Savior that came from glory. No man could save me. No person could help me. No person could come and to bring you in back into an eternal relationship with God. It had to be the Creator Himself and the Creator put off his heavenly robe and his glory and the one that breathed life into mankind, the one that created the world in which we know and the stars and the universe is outside. The Bible said he came from glory. A savior came from glory. No wonder we Christians get excited about the first advent about Christmas when Jesus Christ came it was our Savior that came from glory. And then it says how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. He gave his life on Calvary. Don't you believe those documentaries that are on television that tell you that they took Jesus' life? No man could have taken his life. The Bible said he gave his life willingly. When they came to take him, they said, are you Jesus of Nazareth? And they came with the purpose of intent of dragging him before the magistrate. Can I tell you, when he spoke those words, I am he, the Bible Bible said the soldiers fell back on the ground. It was the same I am that spoke out of the burning bush and it spoke again on that day. He said, willingly I lay down my life. No man takes it from me. He even told Pilate, unless God had not, had not given you the power, you would not be able to take my life. I willingly give my life on Calvary. To save a wretch like me. Can I tell you that when you realize how much of a wretch, how much in sin's bondage that you were, how much you were controlled in the sense that you were, uh, your eyes were hid from seeing God in all of his love and all of his glory and from seeing eternity. And you're the God of this age, the Bible said, had blinded your eyes. You were a wretch. You were not fit to be saved, but God was mindful of sinful man. And when sin had its grip on me, when the chains of darkness was upon me, thank be to God that Jesus Christ came to save a wretch like me. When no one could help us, Jesus Christ came to bring us victory. And then he said, I heard about his groaning, about his precious blood atoning. I'm so glad today that Jesus Christ suffered for me. I'm so glad today that his blood, his atoning blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I I'm so glad there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins from the sinless son of God and sinners the Bible said wretches like me they plunge beneath their flood and they lose all their guilty stains I'm so glad that he set us free 
And then he concludes that first stanza by saying, Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You won the victory. You know you have passed from death unto life. You know you have come out of darkness into his marvelous light. You come out with hands raised and lifted up because the Lord of light has arisen inside of your heart. And friend, when you know that you have repented and you have turned from your wicked ways and victory comes into your heart you're able to sing what he sung on that day oh victory in Jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath his cleansing flood what a great song that second verse of that song deals with our provision in Christ and really our provision is a result of his victory. He starts out that second verse by saying, I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing. You remember that other old hymn song that is sung sometimes since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart oh what joy fills my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart what a day that was when Christ was revealed in you what a day that was when revelation came into your heart about his healing and about his cleansing power and then you're able to say he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see. I'm so glad that my eyes have been opened. I'm so glad that they've been opened from darkness till I can see the light and the glorious light of Jesus Christ himself. I tell you today, I'm grateful for the provision that I have. And then he said, when I seen that, he said, then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. I tell you, God has the medicine that is needed to heal our souls. God has the medicine to bind up our broken spirit. My feet were going nowhere, but praise be to God, he bound up my wounds and he gave provision in order for me to get to heaven. And somehow, the writer, songwriter says, and somehow Jesus came. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to tell you what I feel inside of my spirit. I don't know how the Bible says that Jesus Christ can come into your heart, but the Bible, the songwriter expressed it this way, and somehow Jesus came. Somehow he came. I don't know how he comes, but somehow he comes. When my darkest of hours, when Eugene Bartlett's darkest of hours, somehow he came. And he caused him to write this song, Victory in Jesus, which was a song that has blessed and encouraged millions and millions of people. God knows what we have need of. And he somehow he came and he brought to me the victory. I don't understand it, how he did it. But somehow he did it, and he brought to me the victory. And then in the third verse, he settles our victory with a promise. He settles our victory with a promise. And the promises of God are great. But notice the one promise that is upon Eugene Bartlett's mind as he begins his third verse. I heard about a mansion. 
he has built for me in glory. Whew. God has given us a promise. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. I want you to know something today that God loves you and he loves me enough that he's preparing a mansion in glory. Oh, the promise in the bleakest and the darkest of hours that one day you'll have a mansion and it's being built by the Lord himself. I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to, uh, to have a clear title. The only title I have is my life is stamped with the blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed me from sin. That gives me clear title to the mansion. I want you to know I can't be evicted from it. No man can pluck you out of the Father's hand. Thanks be to God that we have clear title in this hour. And then he says, I heard about a mansion. He has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. Don't you believe those television documentaries that tell us that heaven is just one of those places that every religion imagines where they're going to enjoy something that they enjoyed here. I want you to know heaven is a place without sin. Heaven is a place without any uh, ungodliness. Heaven is a place without any impurities. It is so pure. The Bible said the streets are made of gold and it's just beyond the crystal sea. I don't know about you, but it's a place beyond. It's a place that God's prepared. I want you to know some of us look up to the sky and we say that must be the heaven. No, it's a heaven far beyond what we see and what we can see through a telescope, but it's a place that God has prepared. The other day I was listening to Janet Paschal and she sings one of my songs that is really a favorite. It's entitled, How Are things at home and it's really reflective of asking a loved one in heaven how are things at home from the perspective of the person that is still left on earth I can tell you sometimes I look toward heaven and I ask my dad I said dad how are things at home Lord how are things at home where my mansion is being prepared that's what Eugene Barnett had felt as he was writing this song. He said, I heard about the streets of gold just beyond the crystal sea and about the angels singing and the old redemption story. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. <laughs> I tell you, this story may be old to some, but it's a treasured story in my mind, the old redemption story, how Jesus Christ left glory and bought and paid for my sins and redeemed me back to the Father where I could spend an eternity with Him. When I get to heaven, it's going to be a story that will be sung throughout eternity for what God has done. Man, when you get to heaven, you'll never hear such music. When you get to heaven, you'll never hear such singing. <laughs> Oh, oh, the singing, oh, the music. You know, there's not going to be any microphones. There's not going to be any problems oh, in, in music situations. There's not going to be any problems with somebody that's off key. I'm persuaded that God's going to give this old boy a voice that can sing better. A voice that can sing praises and honor to him with, with a tune. And friend, most of you know that I'm not a person that can sing a solo, but I can tell you my heart does sing because of victory in Jesus. Then he says, in some sweet day, I'll sing up there the song of victory. 
It may be an old, old story, but he says, I've known about it all my life. Eugene Bartlett says, and some sweet day, maybe not too far in the distance, and for him it wasn't too far, some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. That day is coming for you and I. It came for Eugene Bartlett. It's come for your loved ones and family that have trusted in God. And I can tell you that it's coming for all of those who will claim victory in Jesus. That promise is assured. You know, why don't you, if you're by yourself, then you don't have to worry about anybody else hearing you. But if you're with your family or you're with your wife or your husband or your children, why don't you just sing that chorus of that song, Victory in Jesus? And I'll do my best, but I can tell you I'm no singer. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I tell you, there's victory in Jesus. And don't you forget it. In the day, in an hour, when there's so much negativity and there's so much stuff that Satan brings, because all Satan does, he doesn't bring victory. He brings defeat and misery. For the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And that's a life of victory. Keep looking to the victory in Jesus Christ because that's your victory. And in your victory, you will be an overcomer. God bless you. We just ask you to pray with us today that all of us would be victorious. You're victorious if you look to him. My victory is found in him. The Lord's arm, the Lord's right hand hath gotten him the victory. Hallelujah. Let's worship and give honor to the Lord as we pray today. Father, we just thank you for the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful, oh God, that the enemy, oh God, will not, did not, and cannot triumph. Thank you, Father, for there is victory that is in Jesus Christ that is assured to us. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And our faith is anchored in Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we rise up in praise and adoration that the Lord's arm, the Lord's right hand hath gotten him the victory. And so, Lord, we sing a new song, oh God, as it was new to Eugene Martlett on that day, victory in Jesus. <laughs> oh God, we sing songs now of victory also, and we worship you, oh God, for bringing victory to our lives and to our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You have to pardon me being a little emotional after preaching this three times. It's already, it's been in my spirit and it's already got way down deep in there. Uh, you know, the other day I was feeling just blah. You know, I don't know how, how else to put it. And it's just things and uh, finally the Lord spoke to me. And all he said was, come to me. 
And so like an obedient son, I ran into the Lord's tower. The Bible said the presence of the Lord is like a strong tower. It's like a strong tower. And right then, I got a new point of view. There's victory in Jesus Christ, no matter what. So may you as a child of God, and if you don't know the Lord, today's the day. Don't delay. Today's the day. If you're sitting there with somebody from your family and you don't know Jesus, today's the day to have victory in your soul. Don't walk another day in defeat, but walk today in victory in Jesus. Amen. God bless you today. We'll see you next week.